Welsh dragon, symbolising the national life of Wales, rising from a celestial crown, symbolising religion. And underlying the foundation of this college was recognition of the truth thus symbolised. It was founded for the express purpose of training young men as Christian teachers, not just as teachers, but as Christian teachers. And behind its foundation lay the conviction that religion and education cannot be so separated as to make the latter completely secular without frustrating the whole purpose of the former. Trinity College has, throughout its existence, remained true to the purpose of its founders. And both the course of religion in Wales and that of education owe much to the men who were trained here. Both church and state are debtors to them. I do not doubt that the men trained here will readily acknowledge that they, in their turn, are debtors to the college and in a particular way to those who saw to it that the college remain true and loyal to the purpose and spirit of its founders. Life here has been an adventure in community living in a genuinely religious environment. It would be impossible to assess the influence on the minds and on the lives of men trained here of their community worship in this beautiful chapel. And it is fitting that today's ceremony should begin here, for here indeed is the real center of the life of the college. It is no small thing for a college such as this, with a tradition of 109 years service as a men's college, to change its character overnight as it were, and to become a co-educational institution. And the college authorities might well have been forgiven had they hesitated somewhat to embark on such an adventure. But such is the atmosphere and character of the college that all concerned have looked forward to the inauguration of this new adventure in community living with real pleasure and confidence, convinced that nowhere could the experiment be made with greater assurance of success than here. Behind their conviction lies the knowledge that the college has remained true to the principles underlying its foundation. And that implies no small tribute to the staff and students who have shown such real appreciation of the opportunities offered to them and have built up here a healthy Christian community life. I feel sure that all the students whose privilege it is to embark on this new experiment in community living are proud of their privilege and awake to their responsibility. And I feel sure too that the women students who have that privilege will make a rich contribution to the worship, work and social life of the college. And they will certainly not lack encouragement for principals, staff and men students are united in desiring that they make their presence in the college felt by the contribution they make to its life. And all who have the welfare of the college at heart will be keenly interested in the development of its character as a place of co-education. I hope that every member of the college community will share in the thrill of pioneering the development of a richer common life. And I believe that all engaged in that task will come to realize how important and formative an influence their common worship in this chapel can bring to bear upon all their thinking and doing. Indeed, if it be true to say that when God created man in his own image, male and female created he them, it is not unreasonable to suggest that nowhere can he be more truly worshipped than where men and women unite to tell forth his glory. And that when men and women do so worship together, they are laying a foundation upon which they can build a community life 
that will prove a blessing to both. I would ask you, therefore, to pray that God's richest blessing may rest upon all who take part in this new adventure, that they may be able to create a community life in which individuals of both sexes can develop their personality and make their full contribution to the common life. And I would ask you to, to do all in your power to see that no financial or other material lack is allowed to hinder them in their thrilling task. And to those whose privilege it is to make this experiment, I would just say this. Embark on this new adventure as upon a challenge to you from God. Then indeed will he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your mind. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, describe all power, majesty, might, dominion, and glory, now and forevermore. Lord.